Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Seanad and this is Seanzo's Plants. So today's video is going to be about my houseplant kit, houseplant supplies that I use to keep all of my houseplants. So we'll start off with the basics. Essentially I think it's quite nice to have a watering can. Obviously you could literally just use anything. You could put your plants under the tap or anything but I do like to have a watering can. This is just the watering can that I have here in Cardiff. I do have a much more bougie one um, with me in London, um, but unfortunately I left that up there during the whole rush to, to come back down here. And then the next thing I have, because I am a self-confessed over-carer for my plants, I got this. It's a moisture meter. It also got a light meter and a pH meter, but I only use it for moisture. And if I'm not sure if I need to water a plant yet or not, I will stick this in the soil and if it reads wet or um, sort of more wet than dry, um, I might leave it, depending on the plant. Um, I tend to do it more with the plants that don't need to dry out completely between waterings because with them I can kind of put my finger in and feel if it's moist or not. Um, and if it is, I just leave it until it's bone dry. Um, but with things like my alocasias, where they like to have moist soil um, in between water and they don't want to be dry, I'll kind of use this to gauge how dry the soil is. Um, but it's just a nice tool to be able to use and if you do have any pH sensitive plants then you could also use it for that. Again on the watering theme, when I water my plants I sometimes top water, so just pour it straight in over... Um, the soil on the top or I bottom water so bottom watering is when I'll get the this loop in them so if I was to bottom water I would just pour the water into the dish here and let it sit and what you do is you see the water traveling up um, and if I do that sometimes I just top it up and keep topping it up until it goes a few hours without changing um, the amount of water in the little reservoir and sometimes when I top water it then the water will pool at the bottom and in that case I use a turkey baster um, this is quite handy for just being able to suck up the water from the dish without having to take it anywhere and pour it away elsewhere just a little thing that I quite liked using to save moving everything around especially when you've got like 60 plus house plants another thing that I think is really essential are secateurs so i've got these two secateurs they're bergen and ball ones i'm actually a big fan of bergen and ball i think they've got some nice quality gardening kit so these are small houseplant ones this one is an orchid something or the other everything that i mention here as much as i can will be linked in the description if you want to go find it this one i use for more precision cuts so if i need to get deep into a plant that's quite intricate then I will use these and then these ones were my first ones and um, they're just house plant secateurs and they're just you can tell they're just a bit bigger um, so that's why I bought the set the other ones as like my second pair for more intricate things whereas this is just sort of my normal day-to-day -day secateurs um, which I really like and they're really nice and small neat lovely hold and I just feel like they're really good quality. So with having this many house plants and being able to use the same tools on them like all in one go, it's kind of important to sterilize your secateurs in between plants because if one has a disease and you're cutting into it, then it's going to stick onto the metal of the blades. So you wanna be able to sterilize them in between uses. So what I've got is this so what I've got is just this alcohol, I got it off eBay, it's a brew at home, isopropyl alcohol, it's just rubbing alcohol essentially. I bought a small bottle initially um, because I only had like a few plants um, a while back and I just spray the secateurs to there and to there when they're open and then let them dry before I cut the next plant. And I also use this alcohol if I see any pests, so spider mites, I spotted some spider mites on my prayer plant yesterday. So what I did was I just washed it off, let it dry, and then I sprayed some alcohol over it. 
Um, it just sterilizes it basically um, and just kills some of the mites as well. So again, another multi-use piece of kit that I think is actually really important to have if you're going to keep multiple house plants. On the pest side of things as well, I also do have a baby bio house plant bug killer. I only recently bought this. I do also have neem oil, but I'm only just starting on the neem oil bandwagon. Um, I found that it doesn't quite get on with some of my plants. Uh, my friend the, that I live with as well, she used some neem oil for the first time um, around the same time as me and she did find that some of the plants didn't like it. So I'm dabbling with neem oil. Maybe I made the solution too strong or not, but um, that's more of a preventative than an actual action plan killer. So I do have this as a backup. Um, I've only used it once, but it's good to have in the house just in case I see that I've got an infestation happening and I can just grab it quickly and deal with it straight away. Another thing that I have is different types of fertilizer. I have a cactus specific one. It's just any old cactus one I could find basically and then just a indoor plant food concentrate that I just got from the supermarket. I'm not fussy when it comes to fertilizers at the moment. I can see myself getting fussy about it because um, I am aware that they can burn roots um, and you have to be careful. So what I have recently done is I have bought worm castings. Um, so essentially it's worm poo and I've been putting it on top of the soil and then top watering it so that the nutrients from the worm castings go into the soil. Um, so far I've been getting on really well with that. It's a nice organic way of doing things. Also, there's no way that you can burn the roots with that either. So I like that. I also put that into my soil mixture to um, make sure that it's nice and rich with nutrients when I first start my plants off in new soil as well. So on the topic of soil, I just buy any houseplant soil from the garden centre or B&Q, any of them. I will buy cactus specific soils if I know I'm going to have quite a few cacti, but normally houseplant soil is fine. I just make my own mixture at home so I don't have to have a specific cactus mix because I'll just do it myself. To go with my soil, I also put perlite in there. That was a tip from my flatmate as well when I first started off. She is literally such a knowledgeable girl so I've learned a lot from her. And what I do again then, I put the worm castings in there. I do also have orchid bark and I bought the orchid bark from a reptile shop because I do have a bearded dragon so when I went in there I saw they had some orchid bark and I bought some um, to put in the soil as well. Very recently I've only done that and I am trying to sort of dabble with it. So it's not one of my staples yet. The perlite and the soil itself, they're my staples. Do different percentages for different plants and kind of eyeball it. Um, and then the orchid bark is slowly coming in for more aroid mixes that um, I want to make for some plants. When I have bigger plants that need staking up, I have these two things. So this I saw Kaylee Ellen use on her channel. I do mention her a lot because I do use her channel a lot for just sort of knowledge. So it's just like a Velcro that you cut to size and you wrap around the plant and the pole. So again, like any stake is one of my staples as well. I just sort of keep them as a little supply um, in the shed or in the garage and I just keep them there because you never know when a plant sort of all of a sudden will want a stake. Um, they're always handy to have. So I use this and then this is kind of like a bendy wire. I don't know what they call it. It's a soft tie. I've seen them in Asda's, in garden centres, in b &Q. It's just a really flexible wire. But what I find is that these are, because they're slim, they are a bit harder to work with than the Velcro. So I am slowly moving towards the Velcro than the soft ties. Um, my mum really likes the soft ties for the garden, so um, she might want to have the soft ties that I have left. Another thing that I use for when I'm potting up plants are like miniature spades. So I think these are really cute. This is a trio set from Bergen and Ball. I bought this off Amazon. There's a little rake. You can see that, a little rake there. A pointy spade and sort of a wider spade as well. 
they're really teeny but they're ideal for when you have sort of little nooks and crannies you want to just put soil in i use the rake for when i put worm castings on the top just to rake it in and um get into the soil a bit easier they're just really handy to have um because i do have more sort of small size things instead of having um like a proper spade that would just be too much soil um so these are quite nice to have for little house plants as well i like to do a lot of propagation as well and one thing that i found was finding glass jars like some places are really expensive and what i started doing was if one of my flatmates got a glass jar from the supermarket with their sort of curry sauce or something in there I would ask them to please just leave them on the side and I will keep them to propagate in. So I use things like these and old candles that I've used. I kind of clean them out and I put water in them to propagate. But what I also think is really useful is having elastic bands. Again, another tip that I got from my flatmate. So if you've got a small plant and it's a bit too small and if you put it in it would just sink to the bottom what you can do is you just put the elastic bands on there and then you just make it narrower and the plant can sit there and they keep it above the water so i always have a little ball of elastic bands in my little box for plants as well nice little tip there for anyone again on the overwatering point of view i know this video is a bit all over the place but this is how my mind works um i always use terracotta pots um i am slowly trying out different types of pots so for my alocasia i tend to put them in plastic pots so you can see this alocasia dragon scale here this is in a plastic pot just because these plants are really sensitive to drying out if they dry out and i miss it um they will wilt and lose leaves whereas if they're in a plastic pot they keep moisture for a bit longer um and therefore i can kind of keep an eye on it and i also don't have to water it as often Whereas terracotta is great for plants that need more airiness, um, great for wicking away extra water as well. Um, so I've started off purely on terracotta pots because I am a well-known overwaterer and I think they're just great to have as a little supply. Also, they're really cheap. There's like one pound for a pot, whereas if you buy like a fancy bougie pot, it's going to be... 10 pound upwards maybe so you save money as well by just getting the basic pot and then when i'm also repotting things um soil can get places so i do just keep a designated small paintbrush to dust off any of the soil that i find on plants i can get a bit lazy with this and i don't do it all the time but when i do spot some soil that i'm not happy with i'll just brush it off with this paintbrush so this is not essential but it is something that i have this is a filtering jug so for my specific plants like my monstera albo my monstera thai my philodendron melanochrysum any of my sort of rare sensitive plants i will filter water for them just because they can be quite sensitive and browning can happen in, on the leaves from sort of using water from the tap alternatively i will use rainwater where i can so i don't need to filter that or if I run out of the filters, um, I will just fill up a jug, leave it out overnight and let the chlorine in the water sort of evaporate and I will use that. But I do like to filter my water um, for my more expensive rare plants uh, just to keep them looking nice. And then as well, when it comes to getting these sort of more expensive, more tropical plants, it is good to keep the humidity up. So I do have a nice bougie uh, mister but i do have another one that i have from amazon again but it's sort of like a hairdresser one this one is just sort of like looks nice on the side doesn't it but what i also have i do have a pro breeze humidifier that i recently bought um so that keeps the room at the right sort of humidity rate so the sprayers i use more for my little um greenhouses that i have but I do kind of rely on humidifiers in my room now for humidity. There's something extra to have if your plants require higher humidity. It's good to kind of think about getting some of them or just starting off with spraying until you think that um, it's feasible to get one of the big humidifiers. I do like to have propagator boxes. They are really handy to sort of up humidity and rehab plants in them. 
Um, if you don't want to go out and buy a propagator box, then you can just get a Ziploc bags. Plant Life in the Tropics is the one that sort of recommended that to me on her channel. It's great just to make sure that you really, really up the humidity, like almost up to like 90-100% uh, humidity. And then I also put them on top of my Bearded Dragons vivarium because the heat from the viv also helps the plants. So even a heat mat, if you haven't got a reptile that does it for you, a heat mat might be quite useful for any sort of seedlings or just plants that need a bit of extra care uh, if they're fussy from the, uh, the male. Another thing that I do have as well, just to keep an eye on the humidity, is a thermo... a ther a thermo pro a therm pro something like that it's basically just a little monitor that you can just keep track of the humidity in the room so making sure that my humidifiers are working um, and also just looking at the temperatures to make sure that they're not going too low so yeah it's just quite nice to be able to keep an eye on the conditions that you've got them in um, and you can see if the conditions are falling and you can see the plants aren't responding so well then you kind of know where the base mark is for those plants. I do also keep rooting powder and rooting gel handy um, for propagations again, but I don't think they're essential. They can just help. What I have also done before is in water propagations, I've sprinkled a bit of the rooting powder in there and I found that it helped. I don't know whether it was just luck or just a coincidence but it did help them out and last but not least definitely not essential but what I do like to use are grow lights I have a Vipa Spectra grow light that I have in my student accommodation so I do not have it with me at the moment it's one of those that has a pink hue to it so I'm not a fan of the pink hue but what I have seen is a massive massive improvement in my plants that have gone under it so if I feel like I can't quite give the plant enough light than I have given it a grow light and I do really really like that grow light in particular as well and I have had sort of small little hangy grow lights as well that I've just bought off eBay and apparently just normal lights um, like LED lights will do as well but I just bought a grow light just to keep safe with my ones. That is the last item that is on my hands plant hands plant house <laughs> house plant supplies kit video i really hope you guys enjoyed let me know down below what are your top house plant supplies that you use this is obviously a really extensive video but yeah if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more planty content